Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, it's, it's an honor to be here with you. Thank you so much for dedicating time to, to listen to me and, and see what I have to say. Um, I would like to first ask you something. Can you please help me and raise your hand if you ever heard about dark and quiet skies? Good. So we are about half and half. So maybe some of you will learn something new, and some of you will say I'm wrong, and I got it all wrong. But it's all right. Let, let's go there. So first of all, let me tell you uh, what the SKO is. The SKO is the Square Kilometer Array Observatory. We are an intergovernmental organization dedicated to build and operate the two of the largest radio telescopes in the world in South Africa and Australia. Uh, we, I, I'm very happy for hearing that space sustainability is not only space debris, there are many other challenges, and dark and quiet skies is one of them. So I'd like to show you some of the things we are doing and what are the technologies we are working on to try to mitigate these effects. So I think I, I don't really need to go too, much, too deep into this, this slide. I, I suppose you all know that we are facing a, a challenge in, in low Earth orbit, in space, and the environment is changing very, very rapidly. Right, so what we see uh, that this, this change in effect is causing to us is effects on optical astronomy. Right, so we have here on the left effects on observations of, of optical telescopes with streaks when satellites go by the, the fields of view of the telescopes. And on the right, it also can happen that if satellites are so bright we could also see them at, in the night sky if, if the night is clear. And this, of course, happens because satellites are above the Earth and they can reflect sunlight and the sunlight goes to an observer that is at night. So not only effects are on optical astronomy, but also on radio astronomy. Right? On radio astronomy, we use very big antennas or very big arrays of antennas, in the case, for example, the SKO. And we try to detect very, very weak signals that come from many different places in the universe. And this, of course, it's a challenge when we think that there are, there's a shell of satellites above us and the shell is increasing in density. Right, so we have two effects for radio astronomy. We, we struggle sometimes with the very strong intentional emissions that satellites use to communicate with Earth, right, which is more than logical, right? Satellites need to communicate to Earth. Uh, but of course, we are looking up, and that is a challenge, right? So you're looking up to something very faint, and you can receive very strong signals. And there's another challenge that we are facing recently, and it's also related to the density of satellites in space. And, it, and we name this unintentional electromagnetic radiation, right? So this is related not to the intentional emissions of a satellite, but just to the fact that there's electronics in the satellites, and these electronics can produce electrical noise, electrical hum, let's say. And this, while these are very faint in terms of communications, these are not faint in terms of radio astronomy. Right, so these are some of the challenges that we have. What, did, what was the approach of the astronomical community? Right, so we, we, we took two parallel approaches. On, on the left side, we started looking at the regulatory approach, right? So we've been working at the UN COPWAS, uh, trying to, to get more uh, support for dark and quiet skies in there. And I'm, I'm very happy to announce, but you might know, that we have secured an agenda item at the scientific, at the scientific and technical subcommittee for five years now. So the, the scientific and technical subcommittee will discuss for five years issues on dark and quiet skies, which is very good. We also have uh, secured several agenda items in the ITU for the World Radio Communication Conference 2017. Sorry, 2027. Uh, and these agenda items deal with the issues for radio astronomy and specifically in radio quiet zones. So we are very happy for that. And also what's going on, uh, some speakers mentioned this already, is that some national administrations are already including some conditions in their licenses for constellations or for operators that they need to think about protecting astronomy or having coordination with astronomy. Right? But on the left side, we all know that regulatory conditions or regulatory measures take a lot of time. Right? So we also took another approach on the right. So the International Astronomical Union created the CPS. I'm not going to say the name because it's too long. Uh, but the CPS is basically a virtual center where the astronomical community is trying to get together all the different stakeholders to discuss the effects on dark and quiet skies, and including especially industry, so that we can all discuss 
and find the most balanced solutions, right? There's, there's not a good solution in here. There's not a solution that will fix the issue for one of the actors or, or for everyone. It, it will not happen, right? So we need to find a balanced solution that can impact the least everyone, hopefully. So let me take you quickly through some of the technologies we are working on. I'm going to mention them briefly. Uh, please reach out if you're interested in, in knowing more about some of these things. So what telescopes have been working on? We are, we are looking into the planning of our observations, right? We need to track stars, so we are thinking on how we can optimize that to minimize the effects of satellites moving in our field of view. We are also working, for example, on smaller telescopes having shutters, so when when satellites are going by, we can close the shutter and then open it again, avoiding to enter the interference. We also are thinking of having small wide field telescopes alongside the bigger telescopes, because sometimes we're not only looking at images, we're also doing spectroscopy, and you need to know where satellites are. So that's another thing we are working on. And also for radio telescopes, we are working on more resilient receivers, right? trying to be more str stronger against interference, so we don't saturate the receiver and so on. And we are, of course, always working on newer uh, software processing techniques. On the satellite side, we are also working a lot. We are collaborating with industry. Uh, so far, it's, it's been very, go, going very well. Of course, this, this is not solved. But, but we see that there are some things that are, are working. right? So people are working in materials enge engineering, for example, working on new coatings, trying to see if it's possible to make the satellite less reflective, or if it's possible to divert the light away from Earth. Some things are working. Uh, so also, operators are working on attitude control. So when the satellite is at, at night and it's reflecting light, they try to tilt it away so that the light doesn't come to Earth. Uh, and this, these two effects also uh, bring a new element that we need, and maybe it's interesting for industry, that we need new reflectivity testing labs. Right? There are not so many of these that can test an entire satellite and, and talk about its reflectivity in different directions. So that's something that we need to develop as, as industry, as these stakeholders are interested in this. Uh, on the radio side, we are very interested in, in constellations having capabilities like steerable beams, so that the spot beams can look away from radio telescopes. There's a, a reason for that. First of all, there will be no customers near a radio telescope because we need it to be radio quiet. Uh, so there's basically no reason why someone would like to waste their power in a radio quiet zone, for example. So it makes sense to say I can use my power in the satellite in a better way. Uh, also, it's important to minimize side lobe emissions and to control the unintended electromagnetic radiation. This is a, a much more challenging effect, and it's early stages of this research. We, we've been working with some operators in, in discussing how we can have more information about unintended electromagnetic radiation and how we can, add, from our side, understand it better and also make observations. And, and there is also more that we can do if we coordinate telescopes with operators, right? We were talking before about sharing data, and that's always difficult, right? So you, you can also imagine that sharing data between a, a, a telescope and a satellite operator is also difficult, right? But we think that if we are able to, to do that, we can do also some more clever things. Of course, there's the, this, the SSA information that we could use, uh, but also we are thinking that if we can tell operators where the, the telescope is pointing, especially for radio astronomy, they could um, something like mute the satellite emissions while it's passing through the field of view of the telescope, which is very small. So they could mute for a second their emissions, and in that way, that would mitigate the effect on radio astronomy a lot. So just to finish, I would like to, to leave you with this takeaway that Astronomy will have to invest more resources, right? This is a reality. This, this effect is not going to disappear. Uh, we are seeing more, more and more activity in low Earth orbit, and that's normal. So we'll have to inf invest more resources. Uh, the operators and the regulators are recognizing this so far. Hopefully, we continue in this way. I think we, we are seeing this. Also, some mentions on dark and quiet skies, which is very nice. Uh, the regulation is slowly moving, uh, but the involvement of industry is key on this, right? We, we recognize this from the astronomy side, 
and, and we invite industry to work on this. I, I, we think it's very, very important that industry is involved in the regulation and also discussing with academia so we can find the, the best solutions. And all these mitigation techniques are sparking new technological developments. So I think this is, this is a very good thing and we should keep working on this. So thank you very much for your attention.